The first way that a beard can harm your life is that some people absolutely hate beards. They hate them with all of their body. It's like a disgust thing, I think. And if that person happens to be your partner, your best friend, your boss, or something else, it can actually impact your life in ways that uh, you didn't expect. Now, I'm very fortunate. I've got a very tolerant partner, but one of my friends doesn't like beard hairs. He doesn't like touching them, seeing them. And one of the worst things is is seeing a beard hair like on the floor in the shower or something like that, it just grosses him out. So some people absolutely hate it. Now, the thing is about my partner is even she has limits, right? Like I can uh, brush my beard, I can have beard hairs around, I can vacuum them up. The one thing she absolutely doesn't like is if I pull out a beard hair and then for some reason I like to feel the texture between my lips. So I'll put it between my lips and do this and she absolutely hates it. I cannot do it anywhere near her um, and she finds it disgusting. So there are limits and everyone has got like a hard and soft limit for beards. If you've got an absolute beard lover of a partner then you're in for a absolute treat. In fact, one of my friends, his partner, gets him to grow a mustache even though he doesn't really like having a mustache so everyone's got different levels and a beard can sort of like uh, test everyone's uh, sort of like a comfortableness with different levels of beard hair. Now, one way it can obviously affect your life is if your boss or your um, potential employer doesn't like beards. People put you in boxes and we should talk about that next. If this video is useful to you, please remember to give it a thumbs up and also go check out beardgrowingpro.com. That is my website where I am on a mission to answer every single beard question that you have. Go check it out and I promise you won't be disappointed. The second way that I feel like a beard can harm your life is that if you come across someone who puts bearded people in a box, which is based on their own prejudice, their own history, and so this can fall into a kind of number of boxes. Now, I get put in the hips box quite a lot because look at me, I'm a bloody hipster beard walkabout. I make my own clothes. I made this jumper on the weekend. Um, I eat mainly vegetarian. Oh, I disgust myself. Don't you worry. But if you have uh, like a, you know, if you dress more like a biker or a bit more rock and roll, they can put you in kind of the, uh, the hell's angel kind of like um, rough and tough beard box. There are loads of different boxes that people place you in and that can have a severe sort of like uh, impact on uh, your life if that person has some power over your life. So, uh, you know, having a beard is a little bit of a consideration if your job relies on public facing roles or if you're in the job market and you're looking for a new place people who are interviewing you can be like, oh, I don't like beard, so that guy's off. Or, you know, they can just they can just put all their assumptions on the beard. I've not had it too much because I am an independent person. I make my money other ways. Um, and uh, it sounds like I sell drugs. No, I don't sell drugs. I am not dependent on anyone to give me money. I'm not employed. I'm all self-employed, freelancing, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, I think I would think twice if I needed to enter a job market with a beard. Now, all of these have been like external influences which you've got no control about, but there's something that happens deep inside. Let's talk about that. I think once you get past a certain beard length, your identity gets wrapped up with the beard. Now, there's a small amount of anxiety that sort of like bubbles through my body when I think about shaving off my beard because I've become the bearded person in my group. Beards are sort of like around, but in my particular friendship group, I'm pretty much the only person to have a really long beard. And I think, uh, you know, once if I was to stop my beard about here, it wouldn't be too much of an issue. But once you get to a point where it's sort of like significantly off your face, that's when the beard kind of becomes part of your identity. It gets wrapped up. And I think that can harm your life in a certain way. Because imagine if I had to get rid of my beard. I think I would be very sad about shaving off my beard at this stage. Um, and the fact that I've got this YouTube channel, Beard Growing Pro, that's kind of even more all wrapped up with my self-identity. So 
yeah, a beard shouldn't matter, right? It shouldn't matter. I should just be able to like take it off at any moment. But that's not what I could do. I would have to have a long, serious think about the consequences of shaving, which is which is so bizarre to say out loud. So I feel like it can maybe hold you back in some ways because it's just a beard at the end of the day. But deep down inside, it certainly doesn't feel like that. It feels much more monumental. Food and eating is a little bit more of a nightmare these days. Now, I keep my mustache nice and short because I don't like getting loads of food in my mustache. Some creamy stuff, some like uh, flat white coffees, some foam stuff, whatever it is, pizzas even with like melted cheese, whatever sort of like touches your top lip when you eat it can end up in your mustache. And that is just a little bit gross. And I do notice people, if I'm out and about with like people that I aren't, I'm not super close with and they do look at me and I know that I've got something in my beard but no one will tell me um, and it's just sort of like a fact of life. I carry a hanky, you know, I always ask for a um, napkin to wipe it out of my beard or my mustache but there we have it and also sort of like anything, like food. I'm amazed that, we, that anyone can eat food without being a complete mess because when you bite into something the crumbs fall down. Now normally on a normal person they kind of like fall down and disappear. Maybe they'll end up in their top and they'll do this but with a beard, they end up here. And sometimes the more you try to get it out, the deeper it goes. It's like, a, a we should do some study. Like we should look at the physics of beard crumbs on beards because sometimes, uh, beard crumbs? Yeah, why not? Food crumbs on beard. And like, where do they end up? They deep down inside, I'm sure that there's something living in here on all of the crumbs. Um, and yes, it can harm your life because Eating certain things becomes less enjoyable because you have a beard. You can kind of work out ways around it, but I'm always double guessing what I can eat in public and not, just a little bit, nothing crazy, but that level of kind of uh, anxiety about having a messy beard and mouth does impact your life in a slightly negative way. There's no doubt in my mind that having a beard is certainly more work than being close shaved. Now there is a sort of like balancing act. If you just had like a short beard that you ran trimmers over, I think that that is like the perfect um, length beard for minimal sort of uh, care and maintenance. Because you pass your trimmers, you can use all sorts of soap on the beard, it doesn't really matter. Once you get past a certain length, you do have to spend more time looking after it. Like I have a fortnightly really big trim up just to get it all looking good. I make my own beard products, my beard oil, my beard balms, um, and you can kind of replace some of the maintenance with a paid service. So it can get pretty expensive. You know, in Australia, I've seen anywhere up to $60 to $100 for a nice beard sort of shape, trim, and all that sort of stuff. And to be honest with you, I've never been super pleased with how it's ended up at the end, which is why I prefer to do it myself. So I prefer the time commitment side as opposed to paying someone. Maybe I've not just found the perfect barber just yet. Maybe I should go on a bit of explore. Would you want to come with me to find the perfect barber in Adelaide, Australia? Maybe we can give it a go. All right. Um, but maintenance or expense, those are the ways. If you don't have money or you don't like the way people do it, you have to invest time in learning how to look after a longer beard. Like I said, keep it shorter like so that you can trim it with just sort of like regular trimmers. I think that is perfect because shaving every day was a massive pain in the bum, I remember that. But a long beard does harm your life in terms of the amount of time it takes, daily maintenance, you know, it's not much, but it adds up over the course of a week. And then uh, I spend about 45 minutes to an hour trimming it up every fortnight. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just maintenance, money, time. That's what you are missing out on if you grow a beard past a clipper trimmer length beard. So there we have it. There are all of the harms that a beard can bring to your life. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. And also go check out beardgrowingpro.com because like I said, I am on a mission to answer every single beard question in the world. And it's happening on that blog, beardgrowingpro.com. And I'll see you in the next video.